the yogis, those who have practiced, um, should should have a way to measure the benefit that one has gotten for one's life, the profit that one has made on one's life. Siroji spoke about the method of measuring this. He uh, uh, talked about how to comp- to develop the trainings in order to dispel the gross kilesas, the medium kilesas, and the refined kilesas. And if one practices to completion, and the very gross kilesas are then uh, eliminated, they die down, um, then that is one, uh, that is the farthest stage to go to. But when uh, one's noting is continuous moment after moment, then the obsessive kilesas are destroyed. Uh, They have no chance to arise. And if they do arise, one observes them and then dispels them. So in that, at that time, one is one, one is able to observe Uh, the kiles as as soon as they arise even before the mind starts to wander when the mind is just about to start to wander one can observe and knowledge arises stage by stage at the stage of Udiya Bia Jnana seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena uh, the Dhamma pulls one along one is pulled by the Dhamma and uh, one is no longer bored with the practice. So the happiness that one experiences at this stage is far better than the happiness of the Deva realms. And because of that, one no longer, uh, one no longer thinks highly of the pleasures that one used to enjoy. And at this stage, the taste of the Dhamma is very pleasant to the yogis. So at that stage, the yogi's faith becomes quite strong. If one reaches the stage of Uriya Bhyanyana, the stage of seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena, then one can decide for one's life. If one continues to practice, one can arrive before long, at at least at the stage of, of Arya, the very pure, noble path knowledge. So the faith that arises at this time is called adimanka. It is decisive faith or confirmed faith. So one is able to see the dhamma of nama and rupa, mind and matter, related as cause and effect, arising and passing away very quickly. The old always being replaced by the new again and again. Just now it arises and then it immediately passes away. So because of this knowledge, one is able to come to a decision and one's faith becomes decisive. And this is called in Pali, Okapana Faith, Sada. So when one has not yet seen for oneself and in oneself, then one cannot yet decide. But especially at this stage, the uh, ruling power of faith, the ruling faculty of faith, is very strong. The power of faith, faith becomes powerful. And so too, a virya or effort, one, one has the power of courage, the courage to avoid doing wrong, and the courage to admit 
what one has done wrong, one's faults, and the courage also to do what is good. To the extent that faith and effort, sada and virya, are good, then sati also is good. And the observing power of sati is very good. It can observe even small, uh, tiny things. Especially one can, uh, the sati is able to observe um, very uh, subtle levels of kilesas, the basis type of thing that can happen in the mind. And also, uh, it's the very moment the mind starts to wander. Because the power of sati is good, the mind falls collectively on the object one moment after another, one object after another, and thus the power of samadhi is very good. Because of the collectedness of the mind, the power of knowledge also becomes good. Panya. So these five powers faith, courage, the power of observation, the power of stability, and the power of discerning wisdom. If these are good, then one is able to control one's mind and one can rule one's life. When the ruling faculties are good, So because of this, uh, the, the strength of the ruling faculties, one is able to control oneself so that one doesn't err. And to the extent of one's faith, to the extent faith is power, powerful, the other powers become strong. So the, um, one has the power to master oneself and this is this is what the practice is for to learn how to master oneself to gain mastery of oneself and so one one not only is able to do this but one also uh, gains feeling for other people. One understands in, is very well how others feel and one no longer wants to cause others any type of trouble at all. And even the little bit, uh, the, even harming some, someone or something in a very small way, one feels a lot of empathy for the person. So um, this is very much needed in the world. This quality, well, this is one of the qualities of a good person. When at the stage of Uriyabhyanyana, the quality of PT, strong rapture, both Obega PT and Farana PT arise, and this is this feels very good. So uh, one, f for example, one feels like uh, one is no longer standing on the ground. One doesn't have anything beneath one, but the body feels like it's being elevated. Or one feels that uh, joy is just pervading through all one's cells. So this is... Um, the type of rapture that one feels. And because of this rapture, or piti, there comes tranquility of body and mind, pasati. And one's body feels uh, light and gentle and so on, uh, together with the tranquility. And then the quality of, of happiness, sukha. So at this time, the quality of one-pointedness, ekagata, or samadhi, is mixed, mixed together with sukha and piti, the happiness and rapture. 
So it is not very strong at this point. But the teachers tell the yogis there are better things to come. So when the yogis continue to practice, um, what happens is the the piti, the rapture, rapture or joyous interest, tranquility and sukha, happiness, these fade away and they don't come back. So at that point, the mind is more stable than before. The quality of ekagata or one-pointedness is better. And the mind is able to be collected on even very small objects, very minute objects. And at that point, the quality of equanimity, tatra maja tupaika, arises. So these two factors are what remained, the concentration of samadhi and also equanimity, tatra mizatupeka. And at that time, the mind is very uh, still and calm. So this is a... um, this is a very stable, uh, quiet type of peace that that happens at this stage. And the types of uh, things which ex- were experienced before, for example, when rapture is arising, it feels kind of springy or bouncy. It's a bit active. And this is what is good about rapture. And the quality of sukha is as though it um, just seeps through one's whole body like, um, like the cool air of an air, condition, air conditioning. So this too is also a good feeling. And as one continues to observe, there's no movement of the mind due to raga or lo or uh, dosa so the mind is very still and this is the type of this type of stillness is even better than the qualities that were good before this bouncy quality that felt good with rapture and this pervading quality that was experienced with sukha This calm happiness was described by the Buddha as Amanusi Riti Hoti. This means that this delight surpasses that of the human realm. So, <clears throat> because we are beings that are, <clears throat> because we are beings that live in the world of the senses, we tend to like to see good things, hear good things, smell, taste, touch good things. And these things which we like, they capture us, they captivate the one who likes them. And thus they are called kama guna. They are desirable things which bind us. And one is not able to separate oneself from the thing what one likes tends to captivate the one who likes it. So in the practice, though, at this stage, one goes beyond that type of pleasure. The pleasure, the delight that one experiences is called amanusi. So this is beyond the pleasure of the senses. Rati means a delight. This is a delight that arises uh, with momentum. And this is how the happiness of this stage is praised by the Buddha. So in whom does this delight arise? It is said, samadhamang vipasato. It arises in one who is observing 
dhamma, that is, every object that arises in one, because one observes, one sees the object arising and passing away very quickly. One is practicing according to the method, and thus one sees accurately. So this pleasure arises in one who sees the Dhamma uh, by practicing systematically. One who observes like that systematically, seeing the Nama and Rupa, which are related as cause and effect, that arise in one, is called Jai no Jai. This is one who observes whatever arises at the six sense doors, uh, one after another, always observing, and so that the mindfulness sticks with the object. Santa Cheta. This is uh, when one observes in this way. There is nothing to take pleasure in. There is nothing to get angry at. There's nothing to doubt about because one is seeing how the mind and matter arise and then pass away uh, moment after moment in a very fast way. So at this time, raga or lust which grasps on to the object dies down and anger dies down because one knows clearly there's no doubt, no ignorance. So the kilesas, gross, medium, and refined, lo, uh, the, the kilesas of loba, dosa, and moha, greed, hatred, and delusion, are being stilled, and they die down. So there's no moment, no movement here. The mind is peaceful. And in such a person, this type of happiness that is beyond human pleasures arises. In order to get special knowledge, the Buddha specified that one should enter a secluded place, sunyagara poeta. So sunyagara is a place that is free of is relatively secluded, free of human sounds. And one should enter and stay in such a place. And when one is there, one should observe every arising object in one's being. And when one observes in this way, knowledge develops stage by stage until one comes to see the fast arising and passing away of phenomena. At that stage, one experiences a pleasure that is far better than any type of pleasure in the human or deva realms. It is a pleasure that is um, unrelinquishable, that never gets old. Amanusi riti hoti hoti. So at this point, one is no longer bored with the practice one's observation automatically becomes continuous because of one's interest. But this is only happens for yogis who are respectful in their work, respectful and meticulous. If one uh, performs actions such as bending and stretching uh, uh, carelessly, quickly, If one looks here and there, is looking all over the place, then one's practice, one's mind does not become collected. One cannot be described as jai, making this uh, steady observation moment by moment. One's practice deteriorates, and then because one's notings are not continuous, then Uh, kilesas are sure to enter. So at that point uh, one loses one's purity of mind, chitta visuddhi, and 
the pleasure amanusi riti that is described as uh, far better than any type of happiness of the human world or deva worlds these this pleasure is very far away one will no longer get this unrelinquishable happiness better than a hundred years of living without seeing the arising and passing away of phenomena just wasting one's time with sense pleasures better than a hundred years of living like that is just one day in the life of someone who does uh, some does as the yogis do coming to a center like this and observing what arises in their being especially the, when one reaches the stage of udya bhyanyana this one day in the life of one who experiences in this way is better is higher than a hundred years in in the life of one who never sees like this this is what the buddha said directly and those who have come here to this 60 day retreat so that they can see to what extent they have gained a benefit for their life uh, siraji will speak today about how to measure this how to measure the benefit that has been gained So the Buddha said yoja vasasatang chive apasang uriyabiyang that a life of a hundred years if one is to live a hundred years without seeing the the fast arising and passing of phenomena if there were no sila if the person did not keep sila it would be even worse but if there is no knowledge if this knowledge does not arise then it means also that there is no samadhi so sila may or may not be there but if not if the person had no sila to quell the gross kilesas and samadhi not present to quell the obsessive kilesas no knowledge then even though the person were to live a hundred years their life would not be as valuable as one day in the life of a person who practiced and saw udiya bhyanya udiya bhyanya the stage of the pa- fast arising and passing away of phenomena just one life of of being able one day of being able to see would one day in the life of a person seeing udiya bhyanyana is better than a hundred years of not not seeing it so the buddha gave this a way to evaluate and the yogis who have come here for one month or two months some more uh, compare this with your experience compare uh, honestly compare yourself with this honestly seriously not carelessly and not favoring yourself So how much value has been gained one can see for oneself If one has reached this stage then one will remember those one loves one will remember one's parents or one's children one's relatives and one will want them to get this type of happiness This is metta the wish for the others welfare and one feels that oh if they don't gain this happiness then they will continue to suffer and one doesn't want them to suffer 
this is the feeling of karuna. It arises in a special way at this stage. To the extent that knowledge arises, very distinct loving kindness, metta, and karuna, compassion, arise. And these are true qualities, not false. When one practices also, one, one, ha- one gains better understanding of how to weigh what is beneficial and what is not, what is suitable and what is not. Whenever one has the chance to act or speak, plan on behalf of oneself or others, this knowledge of whether the thing one plans to do is is going is beneficial or not, and if that thing is suitable or not, one's ability to to weigh this becomes more mature. And, and thus this ability brings one more prote- better protection than before. One can control oneself better so that one does not cause any harm. So the Buddha also said also, Panyaya atanang rakanto parang rakati, that with this knowledge of what is beneficial and not the ability to reflect on what is beneficial and what is not and what is suitable and what is not. This, um, this leads one to, one, one won't uh, break one's sila and one won't uh, let one's mind become full of kilesas. So one will just, because of this knowledge, one is able to uh, protect oneself. One is protecting oneself with this knowledge. And in doing so, one doesn't harm others, parang rekati. One is able to control oneself with, with wisdom, and thus one protects others. And sometimes... There's the feeling for other people, karuna, which arises. And, uh, and then uh, this is the idea that one understands what, how other people would feel if they were harmed. So this understanding arises knowing how other people would feel. And so one doesn't want to cause that for other people. Thus, with this feeling of compassion, one protects others. And by, by this desire to protect others from being harmed, one also protects oneself. Karunaya parang rakanto, atanang rakati. So this is not something that can be uh, manufactured, this quality, this personal quality. It can't be um, purchased. It can't be obtained through any type of material means. But when one practices, one gains this ability to control oneself. And so one uh, one not only has the ability to weigh What's, what things are suitable and aren't, but one also understands how other people feel, and so one controls oneself so as not to harm them. And this is true culture, true civilization. Uh, in the world, what people call culture and civilization, what is commonly called, this has no meaning. So more important than making the whole world peaceful, first of all, is to make one's own individual world peaceful. So when one has the ability to weigh what is beneficial and what is not, 
and what is suitable and what is not, the ability to feel. Uh, when, one is, when one makes one's own individual world peaceful, one gains this ability to weigh what is beneficial and what is not suitable and not, and to feel uh, for other people, to put, them, put oneself in their place and understand how they feel. If one's individual world is not yet peaceful, then one needs to work to gain this, first of all. So one needs to practice the method of satipatthana. And if one it, it reaches at least the stage of uddhya seeing the fast arising and passing away of phenomena, then one will be truly human. And one has the ability to control oneself with panya, with wisdom. The power, this is what is meant by the word bala or power, the power to control oneself. So when one is able to have a mind mind state mindset of loving kindness and karuna, wishing for others' welfare, then one will be able to understand how other people feel. One will gain the ability to put oneself in the, the, the position of others, and so one won't want to harm anybody. So one will be able to protect others with one's loving kindness and compassion, metta and karuna, and therefore one protects oneself, controls oneself from harming harming them. So for oneself, this is very important to have, to have a peaceful individual world, like, an, like a fresh oasis for oneself. And if one could, if there would be one individual oasis and then another individual oasis and another two or three or four, many little oases in the hot desert, then if we have many, they can group together and bring relief. So first one has to work in order to create one's own fresh oasis one's own, for oneself. And then for one's group, their first, first individuals and then collectively, this is important for the world. But now, because the world is extremely hot, there's almost no oases left in the world. So understand, understanding this, if one practices and works to gain this type of peace, uh, understanding this one practices and works to gain this type of peace. And if one has not gained this, created this type of oasis for oneself yet, again, if one tries again, one can get it later. But one thing to be careful about is that uh, one can't be careless in the practice. One can't just sit and think in doing the practice. One has to follow systematically the instructions. That is the only way one is able to create the oasis. So Although Sayadoji said, okay, if people have not gotten it this time, uh, la- later on, it will have, if one follows the practice, it will occur. But that, is, that only holds true if one fo- works systematically and follows the instructions. So if one has practiced for two months, already and has not yet reached the stage of Uriya Bhyanyana, then um, it won't make any difference trying again unless one changes the way one works. 
So one has to evaluate one's situation and see what is missing. One has to try to fill up what if uh, fill up what is missing, fill up the gaps. And if something is not being done correctly, then one has to make it correct. So that is what is most important is to fill up the gaps in one's practice and to correct what is not straight. So Sayadoji has tried to show people how to do this with the Dhamma talks. And tomorrow will be the close of this 60-day, <clears throat> this two-month retreat. So for today, this is uh, all he wants to say. And may you be able to try to make your own individual oasis of peace. Uh, don't settle for a loss. Work to make a profit so that you become a true human being with, uh, and develop special human knowledge. So Sayadawji hopes that you will be able to practice and develop the knowledge that will make you able to control yourself and protect others, accomplishing two things at the same time. <clears throat>